Hello, this is Don Johnson. The title of this uh, little talk uh, is based on a journal science uh, article in January um, that we'll talk about in just a little bit. But we're going to be looking at some of the big mistakes that have caused a lack of scientific uh, credibility and uh, what is needed to restore scientific integrity uh, by proposing falsifiable hypotheses and the need for keeping speculations within the scientific community. The article in Science uh, in January 28th, Defeating Creationism in the Courtroom but Not in the Classroom, lamented the fact that only 28 percent of all biology teachers in high school consistently implement the major recommendations and conclusions uh, that are recommended for teaching Darwinism. And their recommendation was actually very disturbing to me. The recommended fix is for those who cannot accept evolution as a matter of faith to pursue other careers. And it's disturbing because I thought science should be based on evidence as opposed to some sort of dogma dogmatic faith and adherence to something. Um, such statements really destroy the credibility of science, that uh, science needs to evaluate evidence and base things on the evidence as opposed to any kind of dogmatic doctrine. It's very interesting when I look back at things that, I, that I've learned uh, for example, nearly everything that I learned during the preparation for and the obtaining my first doctorate in chemistry in the American Chemical Society from Molecules to Man, almost everything I learned about chemical evolution during that educational process has been debunked by science. An example from PBS, um, What Darwin Never Knew, it's a good example of what I would consider to be a really non-explanation, except for a very minor gene mutation for mouse coloration at minute 39. All of the evolutionary evidence that's presented turns on or off existing genes with no uh, scenario for creating new genetic information. Uh, the one of the big, big examples that's given is the perfect transitional form, uh, the tectalic, which um, was looked for and when it was found it proved that uh, tetrapods uh, evolved from fish. Um, but Nature in last year had an article that talked about a fossil that was 10 million years older. Therefore, that rules out tectalic as a transitional form. In fact, from the information that's presented in the video, one really could conclude that the very first life of any complexity was created with all of the genes that are currently available and that all is, that is needed is to, to control the genes through gene expression which is a rather ridiculous hypothesis. But let's look at some excerpts from that video. Tiktaalik is a perfect transitional form. Much of its body is that of a fish. It's covered in scales. But it also had something very unfish-like. An arm-like fin or perhaps a fin-like arm. If the same genes were at work in Tiktaalik, then many of the genes needed to make legs and arms were already being carried around by prehistoric fish. All it needed was a few mutations. A few changes to the timing and order of what was turned off and on and a fin could become a limb. Junk DNA was, for many years, over 20 years, uh, considered to be the remains of nature's experiments which failed from, from the article back in 1972. And 
Basically, it was required by the then prevalent Darwinian scenario that we needed all that junk for mutations to take place because that's how new genetic material was generated. Um, and some of the interesting comments on the junk DNA, creationists might spend some earnest time speculating on why the creator should bother to litter genomes with untranslated pseudogenes and junk tandem repeat DNA. So said Richard Dawkins as late as 2004. And in fact, just last year, uh, PZ Myers said, the genome is mostly dead transcriptionally. The junk is still junk. This is despite the fact that the older view that 98% of the DNA is worthless junk, just as raw material that's needed for mutation that natural selection can then work on, the current view is that more than 95% of the DNA is no, has known functionality and more is discovered on a daily basis. One of the interesting books that I obtained, because I was very interested in looking at this scientifically, uh, uh, what kind of a hypothesis would there be from a scientist that God failed the hypothesis? He also makes a very interesting hypothesis that theists who argue that the universe is finely tuned to earthly life have the burden of proving that no other form of life is possible either on this earth or in every conceivable universe that has different param physical parameters. If that's Stanger's idea of a hypothesis that can be falsified, uh, he studies a different science than, than I've ever seen. He also misuses the word possibility. For example, he says there is a possibility that an appreciable number of planets exist with conditions that, while unsuitable for our form of life, can support some kind of life. But in science, it's important to remember that possible means a non-zero probability that has been demonstrated. He also makes an incredible statement well understood physical and chemical processes are sufficient to account for the observed interactions between various parts of living organisms. That is totally inconceivable to me that anyone in this day and age would make that because the uh, chemical and physical properties of life are controlled by life's information. If we look at information, for example, that has been observed for a long time now. Uh, for example, Dawkins uh, said that each nucleus contains a digitally coded database larger in information content than all 30 volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, and that uh, the machine code of the genes is uncannily computer-like. And Bill Gates says that human DNA is like a computer program, but far, far more advanced than any software we've ever created. Craig Ventner, the um, inventor of the uh, uh, artificial genome, let's look at his, some clips from what he says in an interview with Guardian. It certainly changed my views of definitions of life uh, and how life works. Uh, it's pretty stunning when you just replace the DNA software in a cell, and the cell instantly starts reading that new software, starts making a whole different set of proteins, and within a short while, all the characteristics of the first species disappear and a new species emerges from this software uh, that controls that cell going forward. And that life is basically uh, a result of an information process, a software process. Our genetic code is our software uh, and our cells are dynamically constantly reading that genetic code making new proteins. The proteins make the other cellular components, and that's what we see. So what does science need in order to counteract the creationist? Well, science needs to provide plausible mechanisms to explain a number of things, particularly from information science. My second PhD is in computer and information science, and I think it's very important 
for science to provide the mechanism as to how did nature write the prescriptive programs needed to organize life-sustaining metabolism? How did inanimate nature formally solve life's complex problems and write the programs? How did nature develop the operating systems and programming languages to implement the algorithms? How did nature develop Turing machines capable of computational halting? Every single protein that's manufactured is the result of a real computer program that outputs the protein as its output. How did nature develop the arbitrary protocols for communication and coordination among the thousands or even millions of computers in each cell? How did nature develop multiple semiotic coding systems verified to be realities in life? A semiotic code is a code that transfers information from between two different things using symbolic messages. How did they develop? There are more than 20 different semiotic codes that have been discovered in the last 10 years in life. How did nature develop alternative generation of prescriptive messages using techniques such as overlapping genes, messages within messages, multi-level encryption, and consolidation of dispersed messages? How did nature defy computer science principles by avoiding software engineering's top-down approach that's required for complex programming systems? How did nature produce complex functional programs without planning by randomly modifying existing algorithms? How did multiple such programs become simultaneously modified to result in the production of irreducibly complex structures? Many irreducibly complex structures involve the simultaneous appearance of 40 or more proteins. And remember that each protein of those 40 is the result of a computer program, a real computer program execution. How did 40 programs, for example, get simultaneously modified? It's very important for scientists to speculate because that's how new theories and, and uh, imaginations are unleashed. But the problem with speculation is often it's portrayed outside of the scientific community. And the non-scientists may not be really familiar with the speculative nature of something. And because of that, science has really suffered a reputation decrease because of unsubstantiated speculations that are portrayed as some sort of scientific truth. It's also very important to realize that the argument, we don't yet know how this feature can arise by undirected natural processes, but we will someday, is not a scientific statement, but is faith based on naturalism of the gaps dogma, which has no more scientific validity than appeal to the god of the gaps as an explanation for a complex system that we don't know about yet. So hopefully science will have integrity that it won't present things that are not founded on real evidence as being somehow true. That we will get away from the portrayal of things that it must have happened that way, but rather we will evaluate the evidence to see what the evidence says and then we can have some sort of a, a hope of, of getting scientific truth out to people. So how do we defeat the creationism? Well, one way of doing it is stick with science as opposed to speculation. Get the scientific reputation back up and then make sure that science is proposing verifiable hypotheses that can be falsified for explaining the things that currently are unknown. But until we do that, we're not creating anything that has to do with science. Hopefully you'll take this into consideration. Thank you very much.